Hi scholars, welcome to your last week of school. I'm so excited to be joining you guys on this celebration of everything that we've done. So not only is super excited, but super proud of all the hard work. I know the past few weeks have been like really wild with like learning how to use Google Classroom and learning all of this. I've just been so impressed by so many of your self-determination, your hard work, your enthusiasm and everything. I just really appreciate that about you guys. So this week is going to be a little bit different because you will see and I will give you some hints. It involves a lot of games, but I did just want to go over some of the quiz results from last week so we can know who made it on our hall or excuse me, our wall of fame. So let's rock and roll. This is our agenda for today. So we're going to do our wall of fame from last week's quiz. So we'll look at the quiz results. Then we're going to review three problems that like a lot of us got wrong. Not a big deal. We'll just review how to solve them. And then after we review those three problems, you will still have some like questions on your form, your independent practice form. You'll be fine. They're like review questions. I just want you to keep your brain moving. And then after you do that, I will let you guys play some prodigy or some math games, like some of the games from last week. So let's rock and roll. So here was our quiz results, our fractions quiz, our fractions on a number line quiz. So last week our average was only 54% and this week we went up 8% or excuse me, we went up, yeah, 8% to 62%. So I'm super proud of that growth. I'm also super proud of how, I'm also super proud of even though we do still have some red there, we've definitely shifted our color wheel and we have more friends who are like getting really close to being in that green. So let's look at our wall of fame. All right. So our 100% club was Jeremiah, Natalia, Owen, Miguel, and Van Don. These friends got 100% on their quiz. Every single question was wrong, was right. So they absolutely nailed it. Miss Donna was the only friend who made it into our 90% club as of checking it this Monday morning. And our 80% club was Levi Felix and Isabella. So let's go ahead and give them a Texas cheer for some serious hard work. Ready, go. Yeehaw, I'm super, super proud of yourself and like my favorite little otter gift. You ought to be pretty proud of yourself, my friends. And then, because this quiz was a little bit tricky, we did have so many friends in the 70% club, which means you only got like three questions wrong. And a lot of people did get three questions or more wrong. I did go ahead and I wanted to celebrate the friends who were in the 70% club because there were some tricky questions. So Daniela, Ebony, Isra, Asia, Manuel, Charlie, Alina, Joseph, Gomez, Alexander, Charles, Keelan, and Jonathan. You guys are still going to get a Vista virtual point because I do know that number lines and some of the questions on there were a little tricky because I, you know, want you guys to be ready for fourth grade. I want to give you some tricky questions. So I did want to acknowledge that like we had quite a few friends in the 70% club and really, really proud of your hard work. All right. So that was our wall of fame for this last quiz. All right, so last week I did promise you that the top five friends for Prodigy would be earning some virtual points. So those top five friends are Estrella, who answered about 300 questions correctly last week. Very impressive amount of questions. Angel G, Angel A, Manuel Rojas, and Jeremiah Alexander. You guys are getting some points for Prodigy. Reminder, my friends, even if we are working on Prodigy, we still needed to have been doing our work. So there are even some friends up here who maybe haven't taken our quiz yet. So make sure that you are still doing that work and rock and rolling. All right, super excited for these friends to be earning some Mr. Virtual points. Let's rock and roll. Alrighty, friends. So the first three questions in your practice form, which is what I'm currently on right now, are the three questions that most people got really tricked on when they took their quiz. So we're gonna go over how to do them quick and fast before I let you guys rock and roll in your independent practice, and then you can play some games for the rest of the lesson for today. All right, so this one, I think what tricked a lot of people up was the fact that we were counting past the one hole. So this remains some, one of our like weaker points that we kind of need to work on, not a big deal, that practice makes much better, right? So let's review how we find a point on number one. So if you remember our checklist from last week, our step one is we always find the hole because we know from that fun song, the hole is the is the distance that we split apart. So what I would do is I would find where my zero is, got it. 
find where my one is, got it. So what I know is kind of tricky is some people, they really just want to count all of the spaces between zero and the last tick mark. That's understandable, but we got to make sure that we're only counting the spaces between zero and one because zero and one is where our hole is. So like if we were looking at candy bars, for example, this would be one whole candy bar. That's it. If you were to count past it, you'd be counting past air, right? You'd be like holding up a candy bar and being like one, two, three, and then like continuing to count past the parts of the candy bar. You don't have those pieces. So you gotta remember that this is one hole. This is another hole. So this would be like another candy bar laying next to our first candy bar. And then this would be part of even another whole candy bar. So we gotta be making sure that we're paying attention to like what actually each of these spaces mean, okay? So let's do our steps one more time. So we first find our hole, which we did by finding where zero and one was. Great job. So now we know after we find our hole, we count for the denominator. We count how many pieces are between zero and one. So if I count here, I see one piece, two piece, because I stop right here because that's where my one hole is. So I know the denominator for every single one of these spaces is a two because it only takes two pieces. It takes, it takes two pieces to make up one hole. So I know when I am counting by these distances, each of these distances, each of these pink lines is worth one half of a hole. So when I count to my point for my numerator, I'm gonna count by halves just to keep that in mind. I want a different color though. So here we go, one half, two halves, three halves. So my answer in this case is three halves because each of these distances is one half of a whole. I have one, two, three pieces. So I have three halves of a whole. It is greater than one, but we knew it would be greater than one because the question even asks us the number line below has a as a point mark to show which fraction greater than one. So when we're looking at our answer choices, we actually could have immediately gotten rid of both A and C. Why do you think we could have gotten rid of those immediately? If you're thinking to yourself, well, because those are less than one whole, kiss your brain, you're absolutely right. My question tells me, which we always know, we answered your question. My question tells me the number line below has a point mark to show which fraction greater than one. So I know my answer is going to be greater than one. Also, if I look at my number line, this dot past one, it's bigger than one. Three fourths of a whole, I don't even have all my pieces. I need four, I have three. Two thirds of a whole, I don't have all my pieces. I need three and only have two. So those answer choices just don't even make sense. We could also probably get rid of B. And I think this is where a lot of friends got tricked because this is actually our most common answer. We can get rid of B too because B means three holes, not three pieces. Do we have three, even have three holes on this number line? No, we don't. So I think what's getting some friends tricked up is they're like, oh yeah, I had to count three, three spaces. One, two, three. That must be my answer. But remember, your spaces are not one hole. Your spaces are each a half. So in this case, our correct answer was D. So you're going to go ahead and mark D because when we count by halves, we get three halves. All right, let's rock and roll to the next one. Oh, our fishy friend. So this one remained a little bit tricky, just like it was the first time we took the quiz, but more people answered it correctly this time. So I am proud of that improvement. So let's kind of use the same steps we just used to try to solve this guy. Step one, find the hole. Put your fingers on it. I'm going to reveal where they are in three, two, one. You can't see me, but my fingers are on the zero right here and the one right here. So I know the fish, because I see that the point is past one, I already know that this is gonna be greater than one. But I also know my answer is not gonna be greater than two because if I look on my number line, I see one hole, two holes, and my little fish did not even swim past two. So I know my answer should be less than two inches. So, I'm just starting to think about my answer. We know a good mathematician will do that. So now let's actually start to solve. 
So we know step one is find the whole, which we did. Now step two is find the denominator. So we're gonna count to see how many pieces are in the denominator. I see one, two, three pieces. And then I'm gonna stop, I'm going to. Why am I stopping? I see there's more, there's more spaces until my dot. So why am I stopping here if I'm finding the denominator? Think about it, rub your beard maybe. If you're like, well, Miss Kyle, the denominator is the number of pieces that go in a whole. You're a mathematician, absolutely, yeah. Because look, there are one, two, three spaces before my one hole. Remember, once you find your hole, you can use your hand and cover up everything else so you're not tempted to count. I think a lot of us are just like counting to the point because we're like, ooh, we know we need to count. But we need to remember that we always, always, always have to find what's in our denominator first because we have to figure out what those spaces are. We don't know yet. Are they equal to a fourth? Are they equal to a third of one whole? We don't know yet. So we know when we stop at one, I see one, two, three pieces. So I know that when I'm counting, I'm counting by thirds. So a three should be in your denominator. Now, now that we found out what these pieces actually are, because three pieces of one whole is a third, now I can count to the point by thirds. Let's do that in a different color so I can label it. So now what I'm gonna do is I would go one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds. So because there are five equal parts, we have, or in this case, the fish swam, five equal parts. That goes in our numerator because we have five parts. We know those parts are thirds. So there are five, this fish swam five thirds inches in one second. Now, if you were a friend who tried to do this the mixed number way, you can also think about it as, we know that he's past one hole. So we know that the fish already swam one whole inch. And then we see he swam one, two parts past my whole inch. So I can also think about this as the answer being one whole, and I know those parts are thirds, he has, he swam two thirds of another inch, one, two. If he had swam one more, he would have swam a whole other inch. So your answer in this case would have been five thirds or one and two thirds inches. Because he swam one whole inch and then one, two parts of another inch. Those parts are thirds. You're gonna go ahead and type your answer in here as if thirds are one and two thirds. Alrighty scholars, so our word of the day today is proud. And the reason I chose this word is because I am just so proud, like I said earlier, of all the hard work you guys have shown, not only over the past like six or so weeks with Vista Virtual, but also just throughout the entire year. Um, even for my Maryville friends who I didn't have the pleasure of teaching during the school year, I just heard from all of your various teachers how awesome you guys were when it came to just like showing your core values and like really rocking it. But I'm just really proud of all of the friends who have just crushed it during Vista Virtual and you just made me really proud to be your or one of your math teachers. So your word for today is proud. And I want you to remember this word because actually there's going to be a question on your independent practice that asks you to write something that you are proud about doing this year and i'll go into a little bit more detail but i just want you to be thinking about like one how proud all of your teachers are of you but two how proud you should be of yourself let's continue rocking and rolling and making our brains big and strong all right so this last one that really seemed to trick people up a little confused by but i think again what some friends are doing is they're just counting all the spaces on the line we got to get out of that habit in fourth grade, we use number lines so, so much. And if we get into that habit, it's going to be really rough for us to get out of it. So really make sure that we're paying attention to what we are counting. Because again, if I just count all the spaces, I don't actually know how large each of those distances is. I only can count the distance between zero and one, the spaces between zero and one hole, because that's telling me how much each of those spaces are, how far each of those spaces are, the distance of each of those spaces. So we're gonna do the same routine, the same procedure of find the hole, find the distance between zero and one, cover up everything after one, y'all. If you're one of those friends who just like loves counting, which like, I get it, I was the same way, I had a really bad habit of just counting all of the spaces on the number line. Once you find where the one hole is, cover up everything else. 
I don't care. Do it. That's totally fine. That's actually what I used to do. My friends at Hadley know, like, I literally show them when I am solving problems, I cover up everything after one. So I don't, I literally hit my hand so I can't keep counting. So we know that if we're looking for a number that shows a dot place at one fourth, how many spaces are going to be between zero and one? If each of those spaces were one fourth of a whole, how many spaces would be between zero and one? You're going to do two thumbs on your desk and then show me on your hand. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah. If each of the spaces is worth one fourth, I would need four spaces to equal one. So I'm looking for a number line that has four spaces between zero and one. That's the first thing I'm doing. And if it doesn't, boom, kicking it off of Answer Island. Hope it can swim. So let's look at this. So I see one is right here. So I'm actually going to draw a big line. So I'm not tempted to count past it. I'm covering it up with my hand, but you can't really see me do that. So I'm going to draw the big line. So I'm going to count that this has one, two, three, four. Okay, cool. So this is broken up into fourths. It passes my denominator test. Let's look at this guy. Finding the distance between zero and one. One is right here. It even lines up. So I'm thinking this might be fourths as well. One, two, three, four. Okay, cool. So we have another guy that can stay on Answer Island. Finding my one hole here. Here is zero. Here is one. I'm going to do a big line so I don't count past it. One, two, three. Mm. C is kicked off of Answer Island because we need fourths. We need four pieces between zero and one. This is only thirds. So, no thanks. And then let's look at this guy. Zero to one. There's my hole. Make sure I don't count past it. One, two, three, four. All right. So it looks like we've already na narrowed down our answer choices to A, B, and D. Each of these have four, each of these have four spaces between zero and one hole. So we know there are four pieces between in the one hole. So these are fourths. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to write the denominator in for each of these on the side. If you were just writing on your paper, you could just write A, fourth, B, fourth, cross out C, D, fourth. So now I'm looking for something that is one fourth. So I know for a point to be one fourth, I only travel one space. Because in this case, each of the numbers are broken up into fourth, so I only need to jump one space. So I'm going to be looking, where can I jump just one space to get to a point? I'll do it in another color so you can see. All right, one fourth. Am I at my point yet? Yeah, not. It's all the way past one. That's greater than one fourth. So by A, hope you can swim. Here you go. One fourth. Am I at a point yet? No. I'm close because this is two fourths. Am I looking for two fourths? Nah, I'm looking for one fourth. By B, hope you can swim. That leaves us one answer. D, left, let's double check that it's correct. One fourth, am I at my point? Yeah, I've gone one space of one, two, three, four spaces. D represents one fourth. I think what got some people tricked is a lot of us chose C because it looks like, oh, one, two, three, four. There were four spaces here but we didn't stop when we get to one. So remember, we're really working on that habit of like, we gotta stop when we're looking for our denominator at one. We only count the pieces between zero and one. Awesome, so that leaves our answer as D. All right. So that was kind of just our review for today, trying to keep it light, trying to keep it simple because I do know that it's last week of school and I want you guys to be enjoying um, some math games. So I want you to type in today's magic word, which hopefully you remember from earlier. So once you type in that magic word, this is your independent practice for today. It's a lot of, it's not a lot, but it's some review questions like it's the product of six times eight, what is the quotient of 81 split into nine groups, write a multiplication equation, so I should see an equal sign. How does a mathematician read this sign? What's the fractional amount shaded? Represent what's this point? And then what I'm super interested in is tell me something you're really proud about that you did in third grade. I wanna highlight some of those in the next couple days. So like, what's something you're super proud of yourself by? Like maybe you passed like three step levels this year, or maybe you've been stuck on a step level for a while and you like finally beat it this year. That's something to be super proud of. Maybe, you know, when you first tried multiplication, you were like, what in the, what is that? What is this? But now you're like, I know my multiplication facts. I'm a superstar. What is something you're super proud of? Maybe you made your soccer team that you really wanted to make. That's awesome. Maybe you learned how to play a new instrument. Maybe you learned a new hobby. Maybe you tried something new. Anything like that, totally great. Totally something to be proud of. 
let me know something you're proud of. All right, my friends, enjoy the math review. And then once you are done, you can hop on this document and go and play some games. I'll show it to you in one second. All right, friends. So once you finish your form, there's going to be a link that pops up that will take you to this page. It can also be found in your assignment video. But basically, this is just a page that has like a lot of the different math games that we've been playing throughout um, Vista Virtual, throughout school year. And I just put them on one spot for you. So you'll notice that some of the words are in blue. That means if you click on it, you'll see something that comes up here. If you click on it, that will take you to the site. See how it opened a new tab? My screen is changing. It's telling me to log in here. Same thing, like say I really want to play the Animal Rescue number line game. If I click on here, it opens up a new tab for me and I can play my game. So we're just going to come here and you can play any of the games. If you have any questions about like, oh my gosh, what's my prodigy username? If you click on here, it'll take you to the section in Google Classroom where you can click on the document that has your name and it'll have your information there for you. If you want to play some Splash Learn, those are some fun things on there. Check out this resource from Ms. Hendricks. You can open it here. She made us a really nice um, Google Doc that we can click on right here for directions, but it also has all of our access codes right here. So whatever works. Same thing if you're to the section in Google Classroom, student logins, all you have to do is find your page. Your page will be the only one here because I'm on teacher view. I get to see everyone's. So just thought that might be a little bit helpful for us as we rock and roll. So once you're done with your independent practice, enjoy playing some games, my friends. Happy Monday.